it's time to compute the measures of central tendency for the first type of group data, that is the discrete frequency distribution, wherein the data is arranged in a tabular format in which each of the distinct observation is written along with its respective frequency. All right, let's say I am given this data set, which is expressed in the format of a discrete frequency distribution. Then in here, the first observation x1 has frequency f1, the second observation x2 has frequency f2, the third observation x3 has frequency f3, fourth observation x4 has frequency f4, and fifth observation x5 has frequency f5. Okay, so if you interpret the language of this data set, what is it trying to deliver to you? It is saying two is occurring once in the data set, all right, three is occurring twice, five is occurring thrice, seven is occurring four times, nine is occurring five times. Okay, so explicitly this is my data set in the raw format. In order to compute the mean, I need two things, number of observations and sum of all observations. Right, so in this data set, what is the total number of observations? Can you tell me? It's very simple. There is one, two, then there are two threes, then there are three fives, then there are four sevens, and lastly, there are five nines. So one plus two plus three plus four plus five is the total number of observations, which is nothing but F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus F4 plus F5. Hence, we have come to the conclusion that number of observations is nothing but the sum of all frequencies. Okay, understood? Which in here is one plus two plus three plus four plus five which comes out to be 15. So there are 15 observations in this data set. One thing is decoded. Next thing I want is the sum of all observations. How am I going to calculate that? Tell me, what will be the sum of all observations in this data set? Let's start. You have one two, one times two, okay. Then you have two threes, so two times you want to add three. Okay, then you have three fives, so three times you want to add five. Then you have four sevens, so four times you want to add seven. Then you have five nines, so five times you want to add nine. Fine, then you take the sum of these values and this is going to represent the sum of all observations. But let's dig a bit deep into observ observing this. What is this? This is nothing but F1 into X1. This is nothing but F2 X2. This is nothing but F3 into X3. This is nothing but F4 into X4. And this is nothing but F5 into X5. Their sum is coming out to be the sum of all observations. That means the sum of all observations is nothing but summation of Fi Xi, I going from 1 to 5. Got it? Are you understanding? So whenever we have a discrete frequency distribution given to us, in order to compute its mean, what do I need? Sum of all observations and number of observations. Number of observations is nothing but the sum of all frequencies. Cool. What about the sum of all observations? In order to compute that, just create an extra column of Fi Xi. Okay, so F1 X1 will be 2. F2 X2 will be... 3 into 2, that is 6. F3 x3 will be 5 into 3, that is 15. F4 x4 will be 7 into 4, that is 28. And F5 x5 will be 9 into 5, that is 45. Once you have computed the product of each of the xi with its respective fi, then the summation of these fi xi's will represent the sum of all observations, which in here is coming out to be 2 plus 6 plus 15 plus 28 plus 45, which is equal to 96. Okay, and as I said, the number of observations is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, which is 15. That is nothing but sum of all frequencies. 
So the mean simply is sum of all observations upon number of observations, which is summation fi xi upon summation fi, which in this question is what? 96 upon 15. Clear? You can simplify this. This comes out to be 32 by 5. Okay, I hope you got the drill to compute the mean for any discrete frequency distribution. Yes? Next up is median. This is the discrete frequency distribution given to me. I want to compute the median of this data set. For convenience, let's consider the xi column is denoting marks and the fi column is denoting the number of students getting those respective marks. All right, so two marks are obtained by one student, three marks are obtained by two students, five marks are obtained by three students, seven marks are obtained by four students, and nine marks are obtained by five students. So the marks are obviously out of 10. Cool. In order to compute the median, you don't need the column of FIXI which was required while calculating the mean. Instead, you need the column for CF, that is cumulative frequency. What does this represent and why is it required? You'll just understand in a short while. First of all, let's create this column, basically fill entries in this column. So, the first entry is going to be what? Number of students getting marks up to two. So there's only one student who's getting marks as two and there's no student getting marks lesser than two. That means the number of students getting marks up to two is one. Next entry, the number of students getting marks up to three. That means in here, I will need the number of students getting two marks as well as three marks. So it will be one plus two. That is F1 plus F2, which is three. Next, in here will be number of students getting marks up to five. It will be number of students getting marks 2 as well as 3 as well as 5. It will be 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6. Next, number of students getting marks up to 7 will be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is 10. Lastly, number of students getting marks up to 9. That means 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, which is 15. All right, so this is how you compute your column of cumulative frequencies and because the cumulative frequency corresponding to the last x5 is coming out to be 15, it is nothing but equal to the sum of all the frequencies which we denote by capital N. All right, so what is the advantage of creating this cumulative frequency column? So you know as a matter of fact that in here, what is the total number of terms? It is the sum of all frequencies, which is 15. So 15 is odd. And when you have odd number of terms in the data set, then n plus 1 by 2th term happens to be the median once the observations have been arranged in ascending or descending order. In here, luckily, you are, your x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 have been arranged in ascending order. If they wouldn't have been, the first step would have been to arrange them in this order. So now we can just proceed ahead and compute the median of this data set. Because the number of observations is odd, that is n is odd, in that case n plus 1 by 2th observation I will report to be my median. So when you calculate n plus 1 by 2, this comes out to be 15 plus 1 by 2, which is 16 by 2, thereby giving me 8th observation. Okay, so can you, can you just interpret from the data what will be the 8th observation? See, 2 is occurring once, 3 is occurring twice, 3 observations covered, 5 is occurring thrice, 6 observations covered, 7 is occurring 4 times, 10 observations covered. So the 8th observation is going to be what? 7. And bingo, 7 is the median. An alternate strategy is you compute n plus 1 by 2, n plus 1 by 2 is coming out to be 8 you catch hold of the smallest cumulative frequency immediately greater than 8. It is 10. 15 is also greater than 8, but 10 is smallest out of 10 and 15, which is greater than 8. So 10 is my selected cumulative frequency. The xi corresponding to 10 is 7, and bingo, 7 is going to be my median. 
Did you understand? Yes. See, in here, if we wouldn't have calculated the column of cumulative frequency, I would have just listed the terms as interpreted by the tabular data set. 1, 2, then 2, 3s, then 3, 5s, then 4, 7s, and then 5, 9s. Then, all of this would have counted to give me 15 observations, which is odd. So 15 plus 1 by 2, that is, 8th observation will be my median. I start counting from the beginning, and 8th observation I would have declared to be my median, which is 7. But that's not a very professional method, right? If the number of observations are large, you cannot create a list of observations, arrange them in ascending order, and then count which one is the middle observation. No, that's a very impractical idea. This is the reason why we create a cumulative frequency column. Because this immediately give, gives us the median in very few steps. Once cumulative frequency column is created, you know that the last entry in the cumulative frequency column is nothing but the total number of observations in that data set, which if it is odd, then you calculate n plus 1 by 2. Then you catch hold of that cumulative frequency, which is immediately greater than n plus 1 by 2. And the xi corresponding to it will be the median. If suppose the number of observations is even, then you calculate n by 2. All right, then you catch hold of the smallest cumulative frequency immediately greater than n by 2. And the xi corresponding to it, you report to be the median. Got the drill? Yes. Next up is mode. Needless to say, it is again that particular observation in the data set which occurs the maximum number of times. In here, you can clearly see the frequency of 9 is 5. Okay, in the data set, you have distinct terms as 2, 3, 5, 7, and 9, out of which 9 is occurring the maximum number of times, that is 5 times. So 9 is going to be the mode of this data set. That's it. Now it's time for me to enlighten you about this beautiful relationship which exists between the mean, median, and mode. Understand that when I say that a data set is skewed, I simply mean that it is distorted or it is asymmetrical. Okay, so for a data set which is perfectly symmetric or is moderately skewed, for such a data set, a very heavenly relationship prevails between the mean, median, and mode, which is mean minus median is one third of mean minus mode which when you simplify, you end up getting that mode is nothing but 3 times median minus 2 times mean. Mind it, this particular relationship prevails only when the data is moderately skewed. When the degree of skewness is superbly high, then this relationship fails to prevail. Cool. A very simple application of this is this question, which has been asked in 2005 in your JE exam. It says that mean is 21 and median is 22, calculate the mode. Obvious application of this result. Mode will be nothing but 3 times median minus 2 times mean, which gives you 66 minus 42, simply 24 sitting in option C. That's it.